In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here from the maths paper 1-2 from 2024 Cambridge A-Level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, have a look at the playlist that I've linked in the description below. If you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a search on my channel. I'll be doing all this on the whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to in the classroom. But remember, we're not in the classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, even watch it at double speed. If you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, a share, or even a super thanks. In question six, they tell us about a curve that's y is equal to two x minus eight times x to the power of a half. And it has a minimum point at A, and it intersects the positive x-axis at B. Now, they don't draw this for us, uh, although they draw it in the next part. We'll assume we haven't seen that. Let's try and do this question just uh, from the maths. So uh, there's, it's sort of like two different parts here. Find the coordinate of A and find the coordinate of B. Let's go over the information we have. For point A, we know it's at a uh, minimum. So we should be thinking dy dx. That's what I should be thinking for this. Uh, point B, we know it's on the x-axis. What do we know about the x-axis? We know y is equal to zero. And we solve for that. So let's uh, do these in order. Let's do a first. dy dx. I need dy dx. dy dx of this is uh, the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of this, we get a half times the 8, and minus 8 is minus 4. And we take 1 away from this. So that's minus a half. And remember, this is now equal to 0. So we try and solve this. Uh, let's write it out one more time, though. Uh, 2 minus 4. Um, the x will be on the bottom row because of the minus, and it's the square root of x, just, to, just so everyone knows what we're dealing with here. You don't have to change it, but uh, let's add that to both sides. So we get 2 is equal to 4 over square root of x, and uh, multiply that up, divide by the 2, we get square root of x is equal to 2. Um, square both sides, we get x is equal to 4. They wanted the coordinates, not just x, so I do want to know why y is equal to, uh, let's see, 2 times 4 is 8, minus uh, square root of 4 is 2, so minus uh, 16, so that's equal to minus 8, and the coordinate there is uh, oh, 4 minus 8. Okay, that's A. Let's squeeze B down here. Remember what we know about B. It uh, hits the x-axis. Anything that hits the x-axis Anything that hits the x-axis must have a y equal to zero. So y equals zero, let's write this again. Zero is equal to x minus eight times the square root of x. Don't have to do that, but um, add that to both sides. We get eight square root of x is equal to two x. Um, a couple of ways we can do this. We can, um, I didn't have to divide across here. I could start factorizing at some stage. It's what you need to know is, yeah, let's move it back actually. Uh, let's skip that line. And uh, what you need to realize here is two, we can factorize x. The secret is x is actually made up of square root of x and square root of x. That means both of these terms have, well, they both have two in it as well. Uh, they both have square root of x in it. So we could get uh, zero is equal to two times square root of x goes into this one square root of x times and it goes into this one a minus four times so either this equals a zero or this equals zero i guess i didn't have room over there so uh two square root of x equals zero implies x equals zero and square root of x and minus four equals zero implies uh, square root of x equals four x is equal 16. But you have to be a little careful here. They said the positive um, x-axis. Uh, x equals zero isn't actually positive. Zero is not positive. So uh, you might lose a mark for keeping this in here. Uh, so we can discount this one. The answer is 16. And we know that y is zero. That's, we started off with the idea of zero. So that's, uh, the, that's b. And this one here was a. And that's uh, part a. In part B, they give us this diagram here, and uh, this is a great example why you should read the whole question. Part A, we did, I purposely did part A without knowing what it looked like. 
because it's, it's a hard function to know what it looks like this one uh, but part b is the same function and they've drawn a picture of it so it might have given you help helped you with the idea we were looking for a minimum down here and we're looking for the point where it crosses the x-axis uh, one problem i have with this they never tell us that this is the same a as we found in part one it is and they never tell us this is the same b as we found in part one so uh you could um you could get stuck for a few minutes uh showing that this is the same point as we found which was uh let's see 60 and zero and this point here was uh, four minus eight so you might end up finding them again uh because we don't know this is the minimum point like it looks like it is what we do know is these are equal so you could end up putting these equal to each other it wouldn't it only take an extra couple of minutes but you would find that they meet at this point which is good uh, we'd find it again and you would find this point once again uh, in the exam they didn't want you to do that twice i think that was a mistake by them they just they should have explicitly said that uh uh, a is the same A or maybe that A is at the minimum no I don't think they do anyway that's just my rant over this is what we're dealing with they shaded in this region here and they want you to find the area of it so that's it whenever you see the area between two curves there's always one way to do it I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do a slightly different way but I'll show you it first there's all well you should any curve that's curved um, you should be thinking integration so the the area between two curves and that's what we have here a top curve and a bottom curve is the integral between whatever we're interested in the a part and the b part so this number which is 4 this one's 16 so between 4 and 16 of the upper curve the upper curve is this line which I guess let me rewrite because uh, this looks confusing to some students as a line that's just 2 over 3 x that's the slope minus uh, 32 over 3 that's the y-intercept so this point down here is minus 32 over 3 or, or a little under 10 okay so the integral of this is the top curve in this case it's a uh, let's see 2 over 3 x minus 32 over 3 and minus the bottom curve in that case it's 2x minus 8x to the power of a half careful the brackets is minus both of these and then all of that is integrated with respect to x that doing all this and in fact a lot of calculators you can put it all in on it and um, doing all this will just give you the full answer and that's a great thing about between two curves you never have to worry about plus or minus it all fixes itself in here you always get a positive answer uh, once you get the top and the bottom curve whether it's above or below the x-axis which is handy um, yeah just do this uh, what I'm going to do is only half of this but it's very similar so I'll leave this for you to do it yourself but I will just say the area what this is actually finding is the area between this line and the x-axis so it's actually finding the area above it so this guy here is actually finding this area and also that's just a triangle so you, did, you don't have to do this integration the way I'm going to do it I'm just going to find the area of this triangle it's a uh, 8 high and it's a uh, 12 long uh, so that's actually not as hard as it looks um, the integration would make it harder so that's why I'm going to skip it and uh, this guy here is find the area above the bottom one again integration always finds it doesn't find the area below things it finds the area between the curve and the x-axis in this case it's above it so just just bear that in mind so this guy will find um, this area and this minus this sorry uh, this integral will find minus this area which is weird this integral will find minus this area so discount what I said earlier that it's the area between here and the x-axis it is but when it's below it's minus the area Apologies, that uh, was I was just wrong what I said a few moments ago. So this finds the minus area of this triangle. This finds the minus area of this triangle. And this minus and this minus means we get a positive. We take away this and we're left with the sliver in between. And that's one way to do it. The other way, very similar, is I'm going to notice this is a triangle. And I'm going to get the area of this triangle. And I'm going to take away 
uh, the area of this shape here above this so that's taking away um, but it's I need a my an extra minus here because the area above this will give me a minus so we need two minus if you forget that for a moment what you'll see is well let's just think about this idea first I'm gonna get this area minus um, oh well, God I'm, I'm really getting myself in knots here uh, I'm gonna get this area minus this triangle to do that I'm gonna work out the triangle separate I've just done it there it's it's eight times it's half of eight which is four times twelve it's forty eight the area of the triangle is forty eight that's easy to do I'm gonna work I'm gonna concentrate on finding this shape the area between this and the x-axis and um, if I do this integral I'll rub out things to make more room in a moment if I do the integral of 2x minus 8x to the power of a half with respect to dx between 4 and 16 I will sort of find this area I will just get a minus answer and we'll just have to go oh well that should be a plot positive and that's just because it's below the x-axis okay I think I've I probably confused you more than I should have there but honestly I don't really have time to redo it so let's just go with that for the moment finding this will get us this area except it'll just be a minus so that's why I had those two minuses a few moments ago okay and then like I said we just take away the area of the triangle which we know is just um, 48 so let me clean all this again and we'll just concentrate on doing this integral okay but like I said if you, if you want you could have done this bigger integral which are similar this these are the same number, it's just a little extra work. And you could have skipped all these weird steps. Area between two curves is really simple. Really conceptually simple. Computationally more difficult uh, doing this way. This way I'm going with the computationally simpler way. This way. Okay, let me clean it off the board. Okay, we're concentrating on this integral. To integrate this, uh, two, uh, two x's. Remember, there's a little one here above any x. We just add one to this and we get x squared and we divide this by the two. So two divided by two is gone. And next we have a, a minus, um, minus eight x. We add one onto it, that gets three over two. And we divide this by three over two. That's like multiplying by two over three. So we get 16 over three. Um, and that's all evaluated between four and that should be a 16, my apologies. So let's put all that in. 16 squared, I believe, I better go to my notes for this one. Uh, I believe is 256. Um, then the square root of 16 is four. Four to the power of three is uh, 128. 128 times 16 divided by three. Uh, I'll look at my notes here, is 1024 over three and uh, then put the four in and take it away four squared or minus four squared minus 16 and then put the four in here square root of four is two again your calculator does all this square root of two uh two to the power of three is eight eight times 16 divided by three is uh yep yeah, uh, minus minus would be a plus 128 over three uh put all that together and we'll get minus 176 over three but remember we know we're looking for an area so obviously the minus we can turn it to a positive it's it's just a minus because we're below the x-axis so really uh, what we're looking for is this triangle let's throw that this triangle which we already said was 48 and um, minus this shape let's see minus this shape which we now know is minus um, 176 over 3 Again, we change this to a positive in our head and then we're taking away from that. Um, do that sum out and we get uh, 32 over three. And that's, uh, that's the area of this little sliver in here. Um, I, I usually try and teach it this way on the right because students seem to, to accept this way better. They like getting the triangle on its own and taking away, but honestly this way is so much better it's 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 a lot more messy it's a lot more numbers being put in but conceptually it's always the same the area between two two um two curves no matter where they are is just the integral between them 
and your answer will always be a positive if you, if you take the uh, above one first. Um, yeah, so I do recommend doing that way. Anyway, that's it for question six. If you have any follow-ups, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.